Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you today. We're returning to our study in the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're going to look at this next section in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 and 18. Jesus, of course, had been talking before in this chapter about the dangers of hypocrisy in giving, in prayer, and then, of course, he pauses and tells people how to pray appropriately. But now he's talking about another way of watching out. Don't be like hypocrites. Another warning. For the New Living Translation, it says, And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and so disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth. That is the only roar roar they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice your fasting except your father, who knows what you do in private. And your father, who sees everything, will reward you. The question I have for you today is, how do you define fasting? Fasting, first of all, is not a diet. Fasting is supposed to be a time of voluntarily giving up what you would enjoy in order to focus on God. In the Bible, food was the thing people refrained for a short period of time. Short times of public fasting, giving up food, was part of the Jewish faith. However, at other times it was done privately. Even today, fasting is considered a discipline, a spiritual discipline, to change and prepare not God, but to change us, the disciple. It does not and never has changed the mind of God. Fasting does not change God. I'm going to say that again. Fasting does not change God's mind. Just as in prayer, doing certain things like the pagans did to try to manipulate God to do things their way, to offer the right sacrifice. Sometimes people come to the idea of fasting in that same attitude. If I give up food, if I give up chocolate during Lent, if I give up my favorite TV program, then God will have to help. It doesn't work that way. I want to point that out. It does not work that way. Fasting is, help to des is designed to help us, the disciple, focus. And it is never, never to be done when it could hurt you. Since the person fasting is not supposed to hurt, or since fasting is not supposed to hurt the person themselves, then children, teens, and people in poor health should not fast from food or water. I repeat that. They don't fast from food or water. If you want to give up something to help you focus on God, that's good. Maybe social media, sugary treats, your favorite video game, or, dare I say it, your smartphone, or even maybe your dumb phone. Now that we've been talking about fasting is... What was it the hypocrites did that Jesus said was wrong? Well, let's consider Isaiah chapter 58, 1 through 5, also through the New Living Translations. Shout with a voice of a triumph, trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. They act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem to delight to learn all about me. They act like righteous, like a righteous na nation that would never abandon the laws of its gods. They ask me to take actions on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been so hard, very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice. I will tell you why. I responded. This is God speaking. It's because you're fasting to please yourself. And while you're fasting, you keep oppressing your workers. 
What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This is the kind of fasting that will never get anything of me. Humble yourself by going through the motions of pen penance. Bow your heads like a reed bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. This is what the you will call fasting? Do you really think the Lord will be pleased? Or this will please the Lord? Sorry. What's wrong with the fast that Israel made? God wasn't saying that fasting was wrong. God was saying that that type of fasting was wrong. The type of fasting that is trying to get God to do what they want. It's a fasting that draws attention. It's about what I want. Now, there is a time to fast to grow spiritually, and it is something that can help you. Jesus, when his disciples, when asked about his disciples, Jesus said, they're not fasting now, but when I'm gone, they will fast. So in the Christian life, there is a place for fasting. Again, this is not to hurt your body. God gave you that body. Good, take good care of it. Fasting is about giving up something to focus on God. It changes us. And here's the thing. When we change, then that can get us in the right place so we can receive from God. But it's not about manipulating God. It's about changing us. The problem with the Israelites in Isaiah and in people today is they fast and they do these spiritual things because they think, if I do this, God will answer. Or if I do this, everybody will see how good I am. Look how holy I am. I'm fasting. I've gone six whole minutes without eating. Don't you know I'm holy? I don't care if it's six minutes, six days. It doesn't matter. If you aren't willing to let God change your heart, fasting does you no good. If you're fasting and continually doing things that are wrong, it doesn't do any good. God pointed out specifically in Israel, you're still arguing amongst yourself. You're still fighting. You're still oppressing your workers. You're taking advantage of people. You're not doing what's right. And what does God say about this type of fast? It's not going to do you any good. Do you think you're going to get that I'm even pleased with that? He isn't. So let me ask you something. Now that we've talked about what a fast shouldn't be, what is a fast you should be? Now maybe I think of it this way. Why would you give up something you enjoy to help you focus on God? And why would that be good? The reason it's good is because when you let go of something, you're making a choice. You're letting go of something. And if it's something you really enjoy, it, it's, it's hard. It reminds us what, who God is, that what, in a sense, he gave up to become human. As Christians, we know that. Jesus gave up everything that was in heaven and all that it had there to come to earth. He gave up a lot more than what you may realize. But that's a subject for another time. And when fast and we fast, we let go and we, it reminds us that the fact that God also gave. Also, when we give up something, it reminds us, it makes us think, why are we doing this? Much of our life, whether we realize it or not, is actually habit. We do things out of habit. 
Sometimes they're good habits. Sometimes not so good habits. You got a good habit. You get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. By the way, no, you shouldn't fast brushing your teeth. Just saying here. I can, I can hear some, maybe some kids saying, oh, mommy, daddy, I can, I give, I'm giving up brushing my teeth for, for, for Lent, or I'm giving up my brushing my teeth for fasting. No, no, I'm not, pastor's not saying that. If you give up something you enjoy, and, and part of your life is, as a habit is to, let's say it is sort of food. Be honest, much of the what time we eat, we eat out of habit. We also sometimes don't even think about what we're doing. We put the food in and we're busy with our lives. Now, hopefully, if you're going out to a really nice restaurant or something like that, it's not mechanical. You actually take a moment to enjoy it and realizing the, the good things you have there. But many times in our lives, things we do like eating, like maybe even watching TV or getting on our smartphones, check our media, we do it out of habit. When we stop doing that, it causes a break in our day. And all of a sudden we're, we're forced to think about what we're doing. And there are times in our lives we need to stop more and think, okay, what am I doing? Normally I would eat here. I'm not going to eat now. So what's, what's really, why am I doing this? Because I need to know God better. And it causes us to move from the normal track we would follow to God. That's the advantage of fasting. That's what it gives us. And why give up something good, something we enjoy? Because it makes it real. Giving up something you hate really is not a sacrifice. Giving up something you enjoy is a sacrifice that's pleasing. But only if you're trying to live as God wants you to live. If you're fasting to try to be holy and, and feel good about yourself, even if you don't tell everybody else, you're doing it for the wrong motives if you're still living in sin, if you're still doing things that are against God's law. God wants a fast that's not just we're doing something to get God's attention, but it's something that causes us to rethink how we live our life. Here again, fasting is not about, as most of the Sermon on the Mount talk, is talking about, what's going on out there. It's what's going on in me. So what's going on in you today? What maybe you need to fast for a time to focus on God and on what he wants in your life? Or... Maybe you just need to turn your life over to him completely because you are not living as he wants you to. A fast is not going to help if you're not living right. The first step is to surrender it all to him and live as he would want you to. Think about it and have a good day. God bless you. See you next week.